we've been dedicated to bringing you the latest in education headlines. And now that school is just around the corner, we thought it pertinent to check in with superintendents across the state. How are last year's budget cuts still visible, still affecting curriculum and the students? Well, today we check in with Middell School Superintendent Dr. Rick Cobb. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. Once again, I know we've checked in with you several times over the course of the past year and a half, but I'm interested in getting your perspective because it seems like, you know, from district to district, it's a, a it's a different story. Last year, you operated off of five million dollars less, correct? That's right. We we made about five million dollars in cuts, a little more than five million, uh, which was about 65 certified positions, um, 40. 40 plus support positions and then other cuts around the district that didn't affect personnel at all. And looking back on the year, you know, operating with $5 million less, how did you think you fared under those circumstances? I told our staff at the end of the school year uh, when we had a, a big gathering of all of our employees that uh, I'd never seen a more exhausted group of people in my life. And, and I said it, you know, in in jest, uh, we had fewer people to do the job that we needed to do, teaching 14,000 plus students, and uh, and they did it. It just took a toll. It was harder on people. Uh, I think we've seen some attrition this summer because of that, and um, uh, it's it's uh, it's just been it's been tough on people to do that. And we've started to maybe put a few positions back in, but not very many, to be honest. And I know you're doing your best to just look forward, you know, toward the future right now. So 14,000 students, you know, about 115, you know, cuts. Mm -hmm. What about next year, 2017, well, 2018? What's it looking like? Well, our initial state aid notice came in and it lo looks like last year's. Um, but by the end of last year, what we actually received in state aid was a million less than our initial state aid notice. And so we're thinking the same thing right now. Um, we're, we're worried about the state budget. I know there are a few lawsuits that the state is going to have to, to deal with about that. The state Supreme Court will hear those in, in a couple of weeks. Um, and so we're really waiting to get some kind of outcome on that to have a better picture about what our state budget looks like right now and so what our district budget looks like too. Mm -hmm. And so there's no way to really say right now what students could possibly, you know, what changes they could see. Do you expect students and faculty to see big changes for this next year? Not really. We're, we're like I said, we're, we're able to put a little bit back in from what we cut a year ago, um, but overall it'll be about the same. And I think a lot of people, especially parents, you know, just want to be reassured that their children are getting a quality education. You know, people don't want overcrowded classrooms. They don't they don't dig the emergency teacher certifications either. No. Can you guarantee that kids at Middell schools are getting a quality education? Oh, absolutely. I, what parents really want to know before even that is that we keep their kids safe. And so we've been working on construction projects from our last bond issue over the summer to try to help with security in our buildings. But when it comes to the instruction. Uh, again, we're, we're moving forward with purchases of technology to help with that. Our textbooks are probably the one thing that's fallen behind, but uh, before I became a superintendent, I was a curriculum director, and I always said it's not that textbook that teaches kids, it's, it's the teacher. And so to your question about emergency certification, you know, we're bringing in people who want to teach. They don't have the training and they don't have the background. They're less experienced, um, and we're doing everything we can to try to provide them with the supports to be effective in the classroom. We're providing them with mentor teachers. We're trying to improve or maybe drill down what's expected of mentors working with first year teachers. Mm -hmm. And so we think we have a good plan in mind. We have good leadership in our schools. And I, and I think that drives around the culture that improves instruction. So you know, I can say that we're, we're providing good education to our students. Okay, I can hear the, the sigh of relief from parents at home, hopefully. And you know, your district, just like every other one across Oklahoma, just doing the best with, with what you have right now, I'm sure. We did have a couple of viewer questions sent in. Um, I'd like to get to those. Okay. This first one is from Amanda Marie. She says, Oklahoma education is only going to get worse. It's sad that our elected leaders feel like they can play a around with our money while many people suffer. I will not forget when voting time comes around. What's your response and do you agree with Amanda on that? I, I feel like, I hope we've hit a bottom. So, so for the idea that it could only get worse, I really hope that's not true in, in terms of, of funding. It, you know, it's, it's a cumulative loss. It's not what we've lost in one year. It's, it's compounding that with every other year that precedes it over the last seven or eight years that, that's, that 
you know, that, that gets us in the situation we're in. I'd like to think that we're at, at, a, at a bottom. If you look at the legislature last year, there was a lot of movement towards trying to increase revenue and improve, um, you know, um, allocations for education and other state agencies. Um, and then a lot of that fell apart at the last minute. I don't think that that movement, I don't think that desire to improve education and to and to, and to help all of the, the state functions, the, the core state services, I don't think that goes away just because some of it fell apart at the end of the last legislative session. And I, I think it's perfectly fair for people to hold their elected leaders accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk to the people who represent me. I talk to the people who represent our school district. Um, I talk to any of our legislators who'll talk to me. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people wondering how could it go anywhere else but up from where we are now. A second question, this comes from April Ann Coble, and I thought this was interesting. She said, what is his response to the legislators who claimed education has, quote, once again been held harmless? You know, we heard that time and time again. Well. Even if funding was exactly flat, there are two reasons it's not actually harmless. Um, one is that enrollment across the state is increasing, so it's just, it's just a, a ratio, the, the number of students you have divided by the number of dollars you spend, uh, or, or I'm sorry, flip that, the number of dollars you have divided by the number of students you have, and so allocation is less per pupil. The second is that part of that allocation includes health insurance benefits and those benefits, the cost of those benefits goes up incrementally every year. So that dollar just doesn't go as far in, in terms of getting into uh, the classroom, into teachers' pockets, uh, into textbooks. For the second year in a row, we've had no textbook allocation from the state. And, uh, and again, that's something that we feel in our classrooms. I think a lot of people are thinking the word harmless is maybe not the best you know, word to use there. Um, that's just you know, the consensus that I've gathered here. My last question to you, mm -hmm. what is the fix here? You know, how do we get to a place where teacher size, curriculum, teacher pay, I mean, you name it, where those aren't threatened in Oklahoma? You know, there, I'm not responsible for crafting the entire state budget. I don't know what goes on in sure. those meetings. Um, you have to determine on the state level what our core state functions and what it costs to fund those at an adequate level. And if you want to go back and make up for some of the things that were that we're missing in, in education, you know, um, in 1990 when uh, House Bill 1017 went into effect, which really changed education and uh, and secured uh, class size limitations for for classrooms and, and secured teacher raises, uh, those things were put into law. And then over 20 years, um, those those changes weren't really maintained. And so, year after year. Uh, the, the economy, the different people in the legislature would chip away at those reforms. Okay. It was a great piece of legislation. It was a great uh, reform for the state of Oklahoma and for education. And we need to get back to probably a, a point where we're looking at at, at all of the, the different needs uh, at, within our schools. Dr. Rick Cobb with Middell uh, Public Schools, we thank you for your time as always. First day of school is? August 18th. August 18th, so not too long. We appreciate your perspective and of course wishing you the very best school year ahead.